Hello Summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. In this video, we'll be talking about Senna, League's most recent addition to its champion roster. Honestly, it's kind of a fiesta in regards to one of our favorite true damage celebrities, but we're here to clear things up. A lot of Pro Guides members have expressed they are confused as to how to build her, and with good reason too, so we're here to help you guys. There's a lot of options as she's a diverse champion, and we're here to talk you through all of them. The way this video will be formatted is we'll show you a build, and then talk about its strengths and weaknesses, then move on to another build. And for our question of the day, are you more of a fan of KDA's pop stars or True Damage's giants? Let us know in the comments down below. I also want to give a quick shout out to two of our Pro Guides members, Michael Briggs and Peter Wong, for climbing into Diamond this season with the help of our challenger coach, Craziness. If you guys want to get into Diamond like these guys, then click the link below where you can find great resources and coaches to help you get to the division you belong in before the season ends. It's so important to get those end of the season rewards, guys. Trust me, you will not regret it. And now with that out of the way, let's get right into it. We're gonna want to let you guys know that while we're talking about runes and items, there's a lot of flexibility. You don't have to take a specific build with a corresponding rune setup, and these are merely suggestions. While we do make suggestions in other videos, we do heavily push those ones. In this case, however, you can definitely feel free to mix up any of these items into basically any build as long as it makes sense. First up, let's talk about a build that's becoming more and more popular by the minute. Alright, so the first build revolves around using Kleptomancy on Senna. If you don't already know, Senna is a champion who scales extremely well, and Kleptomancy helps accelerate this. It's being removed and traded out for Omnistone, so if you're trying to take advantage of Senna's strengths, then this is one of the best choices before the season's end. Try to use Kleptomancy on her before it's gone, because it synergizes so well with her kit. The rest of the inspiration tree is straightforward. In each line of the tree, there's really only one clear option in each one, so you'll want to take Magical Footwear, Biscuit Delivery, and Cosmic Insight. Mana Flow Band is a great mastery for Senna because it'll alleviate any potential mana issues she'll have, especially if you're building damage items exclusively. Transcendence is another good option on her, as it'll help out with her dreadfully long cooldowns. This rune setup can be used by both ADC and support Senna. So the reason why Kleptomancy works so well on Senna is that regardless of whether she goes marksman or support, she's constantly looking to harass. This is because Senna doesn't have any attack damage growth built into her base stats. Instead, the only way for her to grow stronger is by using her passive, which allows her to gain 1 AD every time she absorbs a Mist Wraith or Mist from her enemies. One way to do this is by hitting her opponents twice, as this allows her to gain 1 stack. Since this is a natural part of Senna's gameplay, it makes a lot of sense for her to run Kleptomancy. When she gets in range, she can Q and auto to activate her passive and also gain some free gold by doing so. It's also worth noting that even when some players pick Senna, Senna as a marksman, they end up taking Spell Thief's Edge as a starting item anyway. This playstyle revolves around building income simply by playing Senna the way she's supposed to be played anyway. You accelerate your gains and can become a more potent enemy much more quickly, opening up more carry style builds with crit items. Admittedly, taking Kleptomancy does give up some lane pressure and early game damage though. Basically, every build has its strengths and weaknesses, and in this case, taking Kleptomancy on Senna is more focused on her items. You want to either aim for expensive crit items, using Kleptomancy as a means to reach them more feasibly, or instead go for lethality items. While she can buy lethality items without Kleptomancy because of their affordability, Kleptomancy allows her to hit these gold thresholds much faster, so she'll have an item advantage during early to mid-game fights. A lot of pro players have been using this or some variant of this build, queuing up as Marksman. Cloud9 Sneaky and 100 Thieves Academy's Stunt have found a ton of success with basically this build down to a T. Team Solomid's Ven has found recent wins with this rune setup as well, but instead opting for a lethality build. Regardless of what you decide to go, builds are extremely important and sometimes quite difficult to understand. If you guys are having trouble knowing what to build in what situation, then go check out ProGuides.com in the description link below and ask one of our amazing challenger coaches. They'll help you out with anything you need to know. They're an absolute pleasure to work with. All right, now next up, we're going to bring a build that really isn't very popular at all. Hail of Blade Senna is an option that players are still experimenting with to a degree of success. So why is this build viable? to begin with. If you don't know, Senna's base attack speed is abysmally low, falling behind practically every marksman from level 1. This also means that attack speed doesn't synergize very well with her at all. What Hail of Blades does is it allows her to be more competent in early game trading. 
Typically while playing Senna, your goal is to be able to Q auto and then back off or auto Q and then back off since that'll give you the best return for how much damage you'll end up taking. Senna's passive also grants her movement speed after auto attacking an enemy, so this is also a feasible option. But what about when she wants to take longer trades? Well, normally because of her low attack speed, the longer a trade goes, the worse things will turn out for her. So even if she wants to get in some more damage and start applying that kill pressure, the returns start to diminish for how much damage she'll need to take. In the early game, Hail of Blades lets you stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with foes for longer trades, three auto attacks to be precise. This is plenty, especially since Senna's passive gives her bonus damage on every auto attack. Her trades are heftier, and she's able to apply more pressure with Hail of Blades, meaning that her opponents can't randomly try to all-in her any chance they get. The other reason Hail of Blades helps her out is that usually to activate your mist on an enemy, you'll need your Q. Anytime you use it to poke or trade, it'll be on cooldown and your enemies will be much more willing to dive in for a heavy trade. With Hail of Blades, it's easier to get those two hits off even without your Q. In a sense, it's a band-aid fix for some of Senna's weaknesses, making them a little bit less exploitable. As the game transitions into the late game, Hail of Blades is a pretty strong keystone on Senna. Compared to her other options, it's arguably stronger, but only at the very end of the game once you finish your build. Up until then, keystones like Kleptomancy and Summonary will probably outperform it during the mid game because of their own respective strengths, extra income meaning faster items from Kleptomancy and more utility overall from Mary. In terms of items, you can definitely switch up that last Storm Razor for Infinity Edge if you need more damage, but it's worth noting that Storm Razor synergizes well with Senna's passive and extremely low attack speed. Let's talk about another Kleptomancy build right now. Like we mentioned earlier, Sven found success with the other Kleptomancy setup, but with a different set of items. This is that item set, Muramana, alongside a bunch of lethality items. However, this rune setup is a little bit different from the other one, as you'll take Presence of Mind and Bloodline instead of Mana Flow Band and Transcendence. This setup is a little bit riskier, as you're giving up the guaranteed mana regeneration and cooldown reduction for the potential of a shorter cooldown on your ultimate. To compensate, you have to build an early tier, which puts you at a power disadvantage. In games where you perform well or are confident you can smurf on your opponents, this is superior to the other kleptomancy setup. However, in games that you slowly start to fall behind because you're weaker in the early game, it'll end up being inferior. You take Bloodline because out of the other six options in the precision tree, it has the most intrinsic gold value attached to it. If you're numbers savvy, you know that Alacrity has an equal price tag attached, but Senna doesn't fully take advantage of attack speed. The next build is another one that's pretty rare, but this time it's for support Senna. Guardian is another option open to Senna. In this setup, you take it alongside Demolish, Bone Plating, Revitalize, Mana Flow Band, and Transcendence. This setup is very, very safe, but gives up a lot of offensive power in return. It's actually pretty optimal in losing matchups, as the shield and bonus movement speed can prove invaluable, especially when you want to disengage with your Shroud. Not many pros have been using this setup, but we do see it up in high elo. Since we're talking about a support exclusive rune setup, we should also mention a build that only support Senna takes as well. Remnant of the Watchers is an obvious pickup for support Senna, but the items really worth your attention are Athenes on Holy Grail and Ardent Sensor. Honestly, I'll admit that even I forgot Athenes was in the game, but it makes a lot of sense to build it with Senna. When you deal damage, you gain 35% of it as blood charges up to a cap. From there, you can heal or shield an ally to heal them for an amount equal to your charges. Since Senna is a marksman support, she naturally deals damage consistently throughout a fight. This also means that she'll provide even more utility when she heals her allies with Q or shield items with her ultimate. Very few champions fit this niche of damage dealing support characters, so it's vital that you take advantage of this when you want some more utility on Senna. Ardent Sensor is naturally good on her as well, since she can also benefit from its active bonuses, and also because she can activate it on multiple allies simultaneously. From here on out, we've covered all the item builds you can take with Senna. Based on preference, you can pretty much do whatever you want when you take Summonary, so do whatever works for you. There are two builds that can run with Summonary. You have the option to take either Resolve or Precision as your secondary, taking Bone Plating with Revitalize or Presence of Mind and Bloodline respectively. For the Sorcery Tree, you'll take Mana Flow every game, but you have the option to take either Transcendence for cooldown reduction or Absolute Focus for more damage. You'll take Scorch because Senna long range allows her to continuously poke and activate it, Bone Plating and Revitalize is the safer, more reliable option because it provides some extra defense for Senna and also makes her heal and shield even stronger. On the other hand, you can take that risk factor and instead go for Presence of Mind and Bloodline, like we mentioned earlier in the video. 
Aerie is a great all-arounder for Senna because it's above average at everything. If she wants to poke with Q, she gets some extra damage. If she's auto-attacking, then Aerie can tag along and help out. If you want to shield a teammate, your favorite pet is there too. Using your ultimate to execute, Aerie. Aerie is everywhere, and you just can't shake her off. She's universally useful on a champion like Senna. This rune setup is a favorite by many professional support players like KT Rolster's Snowflower, XL's Casing, and former Flash Wolves player Sword Art. We've got all this information, and we know you guys want one more thing, an answer. So in conclusion, which one of these runes or builds is best? Statistically speaking, it's gonna be Summon Aerie, alongside Bone Plating and Revitalize when you pick her as a support. This setup has the highest win rate, so most of the player base is best off playing it safe and going with this one. It's a great in-between keystone as it's strong at all stages of the game and is never useless in any situation. A lot of players have been spamming her trying to figure out what's best and have found their individual success using other keystones like Hail of Blades, Kleptomancy, and Guardian. However, outside of very high elo, we think it's best to go for a lane dominant safer option in general. It's more important to play so that you can make it to the late game altogether rather than banking on winning only if you get to the late game. As a marksman, her highest win rate is with Fleet Footwork and Dark Harvest, but we heavily suggest taking Kleptomancy as we don't really see very many pros taking either. Although Fleet may be a safer option, and we just stressed how optimal safety is, we don't think this plays into Senna's main strengths that much to justify it overtaking the potential reward of Kleptomancy. And if you guys have any trouble with these builds or understanding when to use them in certain matchups, then go to ProGuides.com where we have a ton of resources to help you out. That concludes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more content like this, then check out our YouTube channel as well as ProGuides.com, where we've teamed up with the best pro players to design the best content to help you improve. Once again, with the season coming to a close, we hope you guys have made the great gains that you've wanted to see all along, and we're all rooting for you. If you've managed to hit those goals you set for yourself, then congrats. That's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck in your next few games, and we'll see you on the Rift.